over here. We are all connected to the stars. We are all one. Who do you want to be? So you're going to interview myself, but I say this, right, because for a number of reasons, <laughs> like, let's make this uh, an open discussion rather than you just interviewing me. Let, let's sort of both ask questions to each other. And you're going to also, on top of all this, do my astrology reading, because that's something that you do as well, which is astrology readings. Yeah. So I've um, said to you, look, well, I'll share most of my astrology reading or the interesting parts on the screen and you can talk about that as well. Yeah, fantastic. So um, I wanted, I actually wanted to ask you um, in terms of the reading, um, how, how familiar are you with like the sun, the moon, the rising sign? I have to say probably uh, not that familiar only because look I've covered it before but it's just not something that you know I've um studied much of neither so um you'll have to guide us a little bit into that but I do have an interest in it and I'll I'll put up uh, the reading on the screen right now as we speak so um this is how you would sort of introduce your package as well uh and uh, you know I'll try to put some of the um pages on from my reading as we we discussed it as well yeah we we often um i think we get interested in things to a certain extent but our barriers and limitations are probably where we should continue to explore because where we put those barriers and limitations is probably our ego saying you know don't step further than that um because it's unsafe um but the deeper you delve into astrology and the the more you know um, I really do find that you can um, not only learn about yourself um, and your your connection and your um, maybe place within the, the all beingness, um, but also um, heal a lot. Like you can really deeply heal through understanding these alignments, these archetype energies and how they are um driving you so um there's i think yeah a deep deep um healing that can occur um so our sun sign is generally what we um more or less our ego what we portray to the world our um it can drive our soul um slightly and i like to put it in an analogy like if you were showing someone your house, the sun sign is showing someone through your house. So into most of the rooms and taking them through and, you know, showing them your personality and who you are. The moon sign would be showing someone into your bedroom. So it's a little bit more intimate. Um, the moon is very nurturing it's about healing it's about expansion and the creativity and the unseen um shadow forces and things like that um and it's really drives our emotions so just with those two aspects alone um most people generally resonate a lot more with their moon sign once they get to know what their moon sign is because it is their emotional aspect it's that deep dark um, hidden part so um, that's that's really interesting in itself um, because you know obviously the sun has been pushed um, out there when you see um, things written with astrology and whatnot um, however I do think the moon plays a deeper role um, then there's like the rising sign or the ascendant which would be showing someone the exterior of your house uh, so um how you come across to people in a social setting, generally more about um, how others perceive you or how your, um, your 
contribution upon um, knowing that they're um, viewing you and, and, and consciously what you're putting out. And and you explain all this in the beginning part of the the reading as well. There's a sort of an index part here because I'm just looking at it as well that you've provided, which is really cool. Well, I think for you, I think I knew that we were going to be having this discussion, so um, I probably would have written that in a bit more detail. Um, but yeah, definitely on um, my readings, I'll put a big description about um, these types of things because I think it's really important to not only do the reading but empower them and teach um the teach people um about this so they can look further into it absolutely and then you've got the um index houses as well so the, the first house to the uh 12th house yeah so i've got all of the houses um and then they're uh generally like what they govern in your life um so you've got the first house house which is the house of the self um so it's all that i am identity um and that is also uh the house which governs your rising sun they're the three sort of main aspects i think you've got you know all of your planets and things and then you've got your zodiac signs and then you've got your houses and there that's really like the fundamental basics of what you need to know about astrology um and yeah yeah so apart from the sun moon and rising sign the other two big players um which are planets that are in a closer orbit and so we are seeing them more frequently and they're interacting with us more frequently would be venus and mars um whereas you know, your Neptune, Jupiter, um, Uranus is like a little bit more slow moving. So those changes and those energies are going to come through potentially, for example, like in a generational um, shift, uh, whereas Venus and Mars are going to be changing a lot more frequently. So Venus, um, the planet of love, Venus has a really great, depth I know I think a lot of people quite often talk about the big three which is the three I talked about um, but I find that the Venus and Mars is so very important because Venus is how you interact um, with the world in a way of beauty how you analyze things um, on that level and how you express your love and the way that you um, desire to receive love in return um, and then you've got Mars, which is the planet of um, action, expression, and um, it can harness a lot of and hold a lot of those energies like anger and frustration and things like that. Um, so I think that on an ego level and an, on a um, working on our self level, we can take Mars and Venus as very, very strong planets um, to pay attention to. I mean, there's so much to astrology. I mean, uh, yeah, um, I know nothing. <laughs> so, uh, it's, so I'm just looking through this reading. Then um, it's okay. So I'm on page seven. So from page seven, then this starts um, big chart, big five. Yeah. So this is the sun in Cancer, moon in Cancer rising star sign so, so and, and you would do the same reading for other people in the same kind of way then yeah, yeah yeah so um you've got the aspect of your sun being in cancer right but then you've also got it being in the first house now someone might have um their sun sign as cancer but in a different house so it's going to affect a different area of their life or it's going to play out um or be expressed in that area of their life okay so that means then okay i see and then you've broken it down here like that yeah as into what yeah. that so mm -hmm. take for example you've got your moon which is cancer in the 12th house. Now, I think it's important, I, I said to you before as well, important to note that you've actually got like, you're a triple threat. So you've got sun, moon and rising sign all in cancer. Great. <laughs> which um, 
you know, cancer, my, I've got my moons in cancer and cancer is um, the, na uh, the natural place for the moon to be. Um, it's very at home in cancer. It is very, very intuitive, emotional, psychic, um, creative and free-flowing. Um, it can be slightly, uh, what's the word, um, passive. Um, in the way it comes across, um, they then you've got it in your twelfth house. So emotionally, um, obviously, you're very um, in tune and things like that. Just moon being in Cancer, and then the twelfth house is the house of intuition and um, you know the the unseen, the hidden, and things like that. So. There's a lot of water in your chart um, and there's a lot of, you've got a couple of 12th house placements. Um, so it's no surprise to me that you are doing the job that you're doing um, and that you're interested in the content that you are interested in. Um, also cancer actually has a very strong uh, desire to nurture and help and uh, care for. Um, and so, your drive is to help people which is very evident as well i think i've heard this before actually when i because i had a, a chart done some time ago now i don't even know where it is um but this is ringing some bells actually yes yeah because can these charts change or are they they kind of fixed are oh, they no, no. so your birth chart doesn't change what changes is the current alignment in the sky and how that energy interacts with the placements of your birth chart. More or less who you are or those archetypal energies within you innately, how that interacts with that and how you respond back. So if I was to get a reading with someone else, then it would kind of be the same then, wouldn't it, I suppose? Because there is some sort of mystic yeah. science to this, isn't there? Yep. Yeah, mm. it, sh it, should, it should be more or less the same. Um, different people will express differently, um, obviously, um, but they uh, all the content, the bulk of the content should absolutely be the same. <laughs> I like this. When the Cancer and Venus feels hurt or confused, they retreat yeah. into their shell. This moodiness yeah. and sulky behavior yeah. can present some problems, but on a whole, you make an amazing partner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about this before, and you know, like the crab is very, it's a funny creature. It is, has got this hard, tough little shell, and it walks sideways, and it's almost like, an analogy for the way it goes about life because it's not super direct. It does kind of uh, stand to the side and navigate, suss the room and navigate things because it is very, very um, emotionally driven and emotionally conscious. Um, so it's always, you know, very concerned about others and how others will perceive it and things like that. Um, and it, I guess it also reflects um, the tendency to be manipulative, which uh, not necessarily always a bad thing, but I think sometimes they can sometimes be quite passive in the way they, um, and passive aggressive in the way they come across when um, dealing with situations emotionally, because there is so much emotion going on and they're so heightened. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but then obviously you take that shell away and they're quite soft and fleshy <laughs> under there. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, they they as well, you know, like with their little claws, when they grab hold of something, like you could chop the arm of a crab off and it's still going to hold on to that thing. Um, and they are quite like that. Um, they will, uh, they have a very meticulous mind, um, especially with your Gemini in Mars. Um and so they will hold on to things and, um, yeah. <laughs> and for people to get a reading like this, then they just go to your website. What, what is that? I can't remember. So on Facebook, it is just Gaia Intuitive. Um, and 
Instagram is Sal, uh, Sally underscore Elka. Right. And they'll be able to contact you there directly. So we'll put that yeah. in the description below. I do remember you saying that last time now, actually. Yes, that's the best way to contact you. What's the sort of turnaround time for something like this then? Generally, a couple of days. Um, I'm a bit of a slow worker. <laughs> I like to, um, you know, I've got a whole bunch of things going on. Um, I've got other work that I'm doing as well. So um, it, I generally like to sit down and be dedicate a good couple of hours and then I'll go back I'll come back to it a bit refreshed um yeah yeah I also like yeah I think as well like it's really nice to it's quite intimate in a way when you're doing a reading because you really are delving in so deeply into somebody their energy and who they are so you can learn so much more than they could they could possibly tell you um which is you know you have to put a lot of um, time and effort into that, I think, to honour honor the people. Absolutely. And can people ask questions before they um, submit a reading with yourself? Yeah. So if there's an area in particular that they're really wanting some advice in, um, can definitely um, target that sort of information and go expand on that for them. Um, I like to do the... Um, transit report highlights as well so as I mentioned before what's happening in the sky at the moment or what's um going to be you know what's cut what's up and coming and how that's going to be affecting somebody in the next few weeks or the next few months so yeah because when you did this reading for me I mean I didn't really ask you any questions I mean we knew we were going to do this and I was just like yeah sure you know just put, put together the a, a, a rough you know um um, astrology reading and uh, yeah well we'll talk about it so i mean yes i could have asked questions but um i, I think it's interesting what you've got here as well and <laughs> uh, what was the, um page what page is this this is page um eight i was just on page eight right now um yeah where you've got um mars and gemini in, in the 12th house for me and um you will assert yourself with spontaneity, resourcefulness, and honesty. Your Mars energy will be channeled into deep intellectual pursuits where you'll find yourself aggressively debating or <laughs> a topic or a cause. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of what's coming um, up right now. Yeah. Yeah, Gemini is all about, um, you know how they say, like, actions speak louder than words? They mm. are words speak louder than action. So they are very, very good intellectually and um, with communication and things like that. And um that incorporated with the the 12th house placements and all of the water and the cancer mm -hmm. um leads to some very like philosophical debate yeah no i'm just thinking with the when the documentary that i'm doing right now that's going to get quite um uh heated soon <laughs> um when, when i you know start putting some videos out on that um uh, which we'll, we'll talk about as well um Okay, I'm just going to keep carrying on because um, I, I don't want this all to be just about my, my reading, but I just want to give people a taste. And, and people, maybe people are interested in my reading. I, I don't know. God. Yeah, well, I was going to say, um, I was going to say as well that the transit report highlights, they are, um, yeah, so they are up and coming and that is very accurate as in regards to the energies that will be coming in and transiting and whatnot. Whereas if you came and got a um, tarot reading or a um, psychic session or something like that, um, what's brought forward in those sessions is generally more harmonic and in tune with you personally, what vibration you're holding in that now moment and the possibilities and potentials that are in your realm of existence um, based upon that. So that can change when your vibration changes and when other things change. Let's just remind people as well, because you don't just do the astrology. What else do you do as well? Um, so I do a lot of tarot readings, uh, which I absolutely love to do. And in the readings, I delve a little bit into astrology, numerology, the elements and things like that. Um, as I mentioned before, I think it's really good to empower people and let them, you know, 
um, teach them about these things so they can have a better understanding in, of what they're reading um, and actually apply it on a much deeper level. Um, so I do those. And then I also run psychic, um, so psychic training or advancement, I guess, um, where I help clients progress um, and hone in on different skills that they're wanting to utilise and things that they're wanting to access. Um, and, you know, if they're wanting to, I guess, people from an all, all different ranges, you know, whether they're just starting their journey and really wanting to know, um, do the do, help doing a lot of the groundwork um, and maybe reprogramming and that sort of stuff, or whether it's um, more about expansion into their journey and where to go, um, maybe making contact with their extra dimensional connections and things like that. I remember some of the interview that we did and uh, I know that you spoke about a lot, a lot about that stuff as well. Uh, well and, and so much more we talked about. Um, yeah, it's so interesting that you've, that, that you, you were already incorporating the astrology into it. Um, I'm just looking at my transit reports for, you know, uh, fe February, 2022 until 2023. And um, yeah, you know, you, when well, you put here, your emotional communication will feel slightly enabled. Um, no, it wasn't that, that I was thinking, where is it? Um, I, I wanted to, was it the, um, Either you make sacrifices in your work. For the yes, sake of your I life. was just going to say. Yeah, yeah, I've got it here. We, uh, we, um, yeah. Make demands that when will I wrote that. Yeah, it's funny because when I wrote that, I was thinking of you really strongly, and I was really like, um, really wanting to make a point to speak to you about that part, like to see whether you resonated with it as well. I do. You've put here. Um, you, your work may make demands that will conflict with your personal life or hinder it completely. <laughs> Uh, oh my god where, where, where's the green card in it hang on no. um uh, saturn represents your unique emo uh, nature and the condition of your ego okay yeah well just that part where you know the, the the whole personal life what what personal life do you know what i mean yeah. um yeah. but i think it was the was it the transit saturn I, I think it built up to a bit of a um the hard work is paying off um Yes, you've got down here transit transit Saturn ninth house, uh, February thirteenth, twenty twenty two to March twenty twenty four. Yeah, you put here that you know, well the, the reading puts here your life should be approaching somewhat of a peak during the time when your hard work will pay off. Um, and there's not so much that uh, having to you know break away from a relationship in favor for work. I guess that's what it's saying here as well that those limitations are. It's easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it says a lot more than that. I'm just, you know, condensing it a little bit here. Um, and okay, you, yeah, 2020, 2023 is an interesting year, man. I feel, I feel really pumped about 2023. Um, Do you? I feel pumped about 2026. And really, it sounds so far away. <laughs> 2026 and 2032. 2032. Oh my God, are we all going to be here still? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. The crazy world right now um yeah what, what do what 2032 for yourself yeah um i know the planet the planet there's something big 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 in 32 big well yeah, yeah. there's definitely something leading up isn't there yeah. especially uh, with the so, times that we live in right now yeah definitely i feel like something um structurally um as in it's going to be the complete pinnacle year that it something completely is restructured um, or torn down or something like that. Yeah, because you can use astrology as well, can't you, for sort of looking into world events? I know a lot of people yeah. have started doing yeah. that now. Yeah. I don't do that at all. Um, I just have really strange psychic knowings for no reason and It'll just be a, it'll just be a date or something like that, and I'll just know that that's the date. Um, it's like you know, for example, um, the late Jordan Maxwell. Um, he is, well, yeah, absolutely fantastic um, researcher on the occult, and he, um, I think it was like you know three or four weeks prior to his passing, I was watching one of his videos and just had this eerie thought where it was like I wonder when he'll die and it was 
I asked that because of a knowing that came across that was like, he's going to die soon. Um, and yeah, I just kind of knew. Um, but, you know, you don't want to walk around announcing people's deaths and things like that. So you just kind of keep that stuff to yourself. Mm, mm. Yeah, I, I almost got him on for an interview, but he was a difficult guy to to narrow down. And uh, I think his mind was going a bit towards the end of his life. Well, I know it was. So, you know, I guess... Well, I mean, he had, he had yeah. a lot going on in there, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think... it. Yeah, because um, yeah, he only passed away... Was it last year? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you um, kind, of, <laughs> kind of off the topic, but like full of, you know, weird knowledge and things. Um, how far have you taken your channeling or meditative experiences? Well, you know, my back in the day, which was, sounds so long ago now, doesn't it? When was it? That was about 2014, 2015. And I started to, I, I practiced channeling and I actually produced enough material to, to write a book. That book got, was half edited, okay? And um, I am going to finish it. I am going to finish that book. I know I've talked about it a long time ago for those who have stuck around with me this long. Um, but I was thinking about it just the other day I think I'm going to go ahead and try to pull back the guy that I was working with to um, uh, finish editing that book because his name was uh, is Donald. And we had a little bit of a disagreement with a few things. It was a bit more than that. Hence, we stopped working together. But we've just started talking again. And I'm like, Donald, we need to finish that book. So it's called... Um, that was a weird title. It, it, it was "Who am I really? Who are you really?" It's something like that. I, I, I something like that. And um, so, in in this channeling channel material that that I was bringing through, I think the biggest message was that there was a great change about to happen. That I, yeah, there there was this hu the humongous change that there was a change that was um, going to take place in my lifetime. And um, there was much more to it than that. Of course, it wasn't just about that. But that was when I think about the book and I was thinking about it the other day, that that's the feeling I get from it. That was and I was like, damn, you know, I mean, I mean, just look what's going on in the world right now. You know, talk about change. So, yeah, how far have I gone? Pretty well, I think I think I think it was pretty far. I, I used to work with uh, what called itself Edgar Casey. And and it, it you know I I I would take myself down in in this sort of like uh, trance state and then um, he would be there but I, I, there would be like a door that a door frame that would appear and I would walk through that door and the minute I walked through that door it was like you know then something you know I was connected to this greater part of myself. Uh, it's funny that you say yeah. the door. I use the same technique. That's so weird. Okay. Yeah, I use a window or a door. I don't always mm. hear that. Mm. And I usually so do did Edgar Casey like um was he like somewhat of a um a guide. Uh, a, yeah, like a guard to the door and who what with with the transaction of like what energy came through. I think so. I think so. He, it was yeah. like a round, it, he was always there. And then sometimes it was like a round table, but it wasn't a round table. It was a, a massive kind of, well, not a mat, well, it was a table with people around it sometimes. And it was made, like different people from this table contributed towards this book. And Were they, huh, that's interesting. Like humans? Ah, uh, well, they look human. <laughs> I don't know. You know, um, I think so. I, I, I don't know if all, all of them had incarnated in, in, in lives uh, as we understand it. Um, it was like a kind of beginner's book in, in into the subject as well. Uh, and that it talked about there were many more books. But I, I kind of cut it off a little bit at some point because uh, my ego got in the way. And when I was doing the channeling docu series, I didn't want to have that there. I, I wanted to sort of go from a, a stance of um, being on a journey. Well, well I, I actually went to do the channeling docu series as a documentary, and 
it, so would you say that you were looking more didn't to turn out like that. maybe let stop focusing on yourself and um yeah more the other stories yeah to them absolutely yeah 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 and then um stress and pressure takes over then do you know what i mean when you're, when you're doing that kind of thing and you forget about it anyway um i often find i often find that um people that are very good at um doing what you do um and you know delving right into the these topics and the content and other people especially um sometimes having the focus taken off you is actually I don't know, I guess it could be an escape, um, but I think sometimes it, I think it can sometimes be an escape in the good way that it allows you to heal through other people and their experiences um, without directly focusing it on yourself. I think there's some truth in that. Most, most definitely. You know, yeah. it's it's funny the other day, and I hope I'm not going to take us too off tangent here. You you just triggered something, just a little thing that just came in my mind there. I was thinking, you know, um, to myself, God, I, you know, I, I so wish that I, I had achieved so much more in my life than where I am right now. Um, and I was thinking this the other day, and uh, you know, I feel for myself that my if if there are things that I see as a sort of achievement that others will see as a, as an achievement, when maybe there's that part of me that still sees it like that, it's not you know I, I'm not getting there to my later life, and I really wanted it for when I was younger. Do you know that? Um, Cancer has very high standards, and you also have I mean you do have quite a quite a chart for that. So naturally inclined, don't be too hard on yourself for feeling that way. Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe it was watching the Kanye West documentary on Netflix the other day. I don't know what it was that brought brought it out on, on me to, to think this way, but um, maybe I do think about it and maybe watching that documentary, a docuseries, just maybe just feel it a bit more. But um, mind you, I feel sad for him watching it because obviously he's, you know, losing his mind a little bit. Um, with uh, I haven't watched it. it yeah, it, 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 it's... it's he's, got, he, he's got bipolar, but he is... Yeah. His mind is phenomenal. It's phenomenal, and it it was sad to watch the decline and, and the the bipolar come in there from who he was to where he is now. And uh, I I was like, I you know what? As much as I'm feeling like I haven't achieved what I wanted to right now, I'm glad I've got my mind still. Yeah. Because that that's one yeah. thing the documentary reminded me like what it is to lose your mind. Um, which was sad to see that actually. Um, people, I don't think people understood or understand unless they watched that. Just the degradation in some faculties that is, you know, we take for granted. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, it's funny, but I do feel such a shift happening right now, and it's because I'm listening to my higher self. Maybe, maybe it is. Um, back in back in 2014, I. Um, no, sorry, back in 2016, I was living in Holland. I was living in the Netherlands. And I'd actually moved there because um, in 2014, or prior to that, I had really wanted to set up a network, my own my own network, um, which was going to be called More Talk. And um, I'd just come off this massive high of sort of having this you know, like localized kind of like or national kind of back end like TV show that I was doing in the UK. And that 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 had gone on its own trajectory where, you know, it, it had sort of died a little bit because we lost contracts, a contract with what was then our place where we were filming it and everything. And, you know, it, it, things just weren't didn't feel like they were they were going in the right direction sometimes. And I wasn't listening to people that if I had listened to them, you know, I, I would you know, things would have been different. But I did. I don't know why I wasn't doing that. And uh, I had this crazy idea of, you know, trying to raise money to, to build this network. It all went to shit. My relationship went to shit at the time. <laughs> and um I'm glad that 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 she did what she did at the time because you know she went on to do great great things and I'm and I'm total respect to 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 what what she did but it just felt like you know when everything's going <laughs> wrong right when it rains it pours <laughs> yeah oh when it rains it pours I like you know I I couldn't afford to stay where I was at you know I had to move back to my hometown I felt so lost and um um I, I was going somewhere with this and I can't remember but um 
just uh i oh, think the big shifts big shifts big shifts yeah there was something i was going to say there and uh, i'm losing my mind i've talked about you know, other people losing theirs uh, <laughs> i kind of keep this together it came, <laughs> it came up i was having a look at your yeah your there was video. something i was going to say there um, but um well was it about ah, your no image i know i know where this was going i know where this is going right so I come back. I come back to uh, my hometown of Grimsby, which was where I'd originally, well, not born, but that's that's where I did some of my growing up. <laughs> Still growing up now, kind of. Um, and um, I met my old business partner there. That back in the day, we had a software distribution company. So we get back together, like drawn like magnets, and um, you know, he he had gone on a different path, and so had I, and we, you know, and 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 then then you know, we were like, oh, you know, back in the day, you know, we had talked about opening up a um, um, a sex toy store, right, you know, and, and what, what money we could have earned if we had done it. And I was at this point where I was like, you know what, John, um, if I could move away right now and go do something different, I would do. I'm, I'm so fed up with everything I'm doing. Nothing's worked out right. And um, so, so in the background, we're, we're you know, we, we decided to get back together and we're we're building building this online store, and I I decided, you know what, John, I'm going to move to a, 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 a sex toy store, toys, sex toys. You, you were right? building it. And well, I was building. We decided to get back together, and we were going to build a store that was going to sell sex toys. Because back in the day, when we were <laughs> to get back back in the day when we were together working together, we had talked about this idea, and we never did it. And when we got back together, we were like, oh, God, if only we had done that, we would have made a frigging fortune, you know, and all this kind of talk, you know. And I had said to him, look, I want to move to Holland. And, um, you know, because there's a big distributor over there for this stuff. And I just want to get away from the UK. I just want to change a life, blah, blah, blah. So I move over to Holland. Two days after moving over there, he phone he phones up and he's like, Kev, I've changed my mind. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going to get into flipping houses. And pardon the pun, it was like he pulled out, right? <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh my god, I've come. What, what am I doing over here? Do you know what I mean? It's like I I didn't I didn't come over here for, to to not you know whatever, right? But you know what? It was the best thing ever because um, not only every day was I getting stoned and it was legal. Um, it was I just I just really it was uh, it was over there that I was in a cafe. <laughs> getting stoned and um it, the idea um for the channeling docuseries came to me it was it, it was it and it had been speaking to me before i know it had and it was the idea was born there to be honest with you um were you channeling at that point no well i'd stopped the channeling back in the uk when i was yeah um yeah yeah, yeah. oh what a life right and um um yeah and and then I made my mind up while I was over there that actually I was going to raise money to do this. And I took it really seriously. And I moved back to the UK. I moved back in with my brother because, you know, I, you know, well, I just, I just thought I'd just, just do it temporarily while, while I'm just getting everything up and running with a channeling docuseries and raised over $40,000 to, to make it. And, um, you know, life went on from there. So every time I've tried to get away from doing what I'm doing, <laughs> right? Or doing something else that's completely off the rails, right? Um, it it always pulls me back in and no, Kev, you're not allowed to do that. This is what you've got to do. Yada yada yada. I, um um but actually what's going on right now in my life is um but back when I was in Holland, I actually had a past life well, I had a guy approach me. I had a guy approach me who wanted to um uh, come on my show to promote, you know, that he's doing past life regressions or that he's doing hypnosis. And oh, I was really? like, you know, yeah. yeah I, I, I really want to talk to you about this. Yeah, well, so, I, and I, I, well, let me just, I'll just, I'll just finish real quick, real quick. And I didn't, I didn't want to know about it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't want to do it. And he was like, come on, you got to do it. You got to do it. You know, blah, blah. You know, you got to give, you know, it'll give you a, perce a, a perception of what I'm, what I'm trying to do. And I was like, come on then, you know, I'll do it. So, I don't. I, I can. I'll play a little bit of the video, and then after the video, we can we can talk first, about it. Was that your first experience ever? No, I had uh, I had done it before previously, but I'd never, I'd I'd never, you know what was funny about this, right? Was when, when I came out of the regression, I I didn't have a clue what he was talking about, 
and and it's so weird to say that right because had i not experienced it i would have not i'm not I, I, it, it would be, it would sound like i'm you know pulling pulling the wall over a little bit right but honestly i came out of it and he was like oh my god you know that's such a great idea kind of thing and i was like uh, and they said this this name the international spiritual news network i said like, like, god that's a great name where, where do you get that from he's like you know i got it from you kind of thing and it wasn't until the later on that night when i listened back to the video that he gave me that i was like oh my god um that's a that's an idea do you know what i mean um and and it was in that regression i i just remember i the casey was there and i and i, and I in when the regressionist had asked me where was I and I and I knew I was in Los Angeles, but I knew I wasn't just based there. There was there was other places and for this international spiritual news network reporting the news from a spiritual perspective, there were times of great change that, that it, it felt like the world was going through great change. And I don't mean and I don't mean just like the the weather. I'm talking about not just politically. I'm talking about emotionally and like energetically i'm talking about maybe wars or something there'd been a change that there, there was something happening or changes it wasn't the end otherwise i would have been there right like it, a takeover or an upheaval or something like something that. something just like we've seen now seeing now the beginning of what's going on with the ukraine and everything else something was changing and and i ch decided many years ago before this point where, where i was at uh, uh, that 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 news was the, was the way that i was going to go to to tell the news from a spiritual perspective or look, to, to look at the deeper karmic reasons at least at least that so i'll let you talk but yeah that was yeah i just wanted to ask quickly does that have to be done in person it was all remote it was okay. all remote, so he was he was in my America. Understanding, my understanding is that um, on a quantum level, um, it does work that way. But I've have heard from other people saying that the experience needs to be in yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. Um, I mean, I think if a person's there, you know, it's always not, always nice to have the person there. But if they're not, it can be done as well. I think there was this all sort of a wives' tale of maybe you know. <laughs> If if the connection was lost, then you know the person's going to be trapped for hours in 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 that deep state. Deep state, but it's not like that at all. You are able to pull yourself out of that deep state uh, at any moment, and you're in control. Now, now, this doesn't work for everyone, I don't think. But if you're willing to go with it, um, I. But honestly, I I had never experienced anything like that before. The depth uh, being so deep, and um, you know. All these years later, it's taken me until just this year, the beginning of this year, to to change everything. I'm no longer my YouTube channel or my, all my social media channels are no longer the Moore Show. They're now the International Spiritual News Network because in 2023, I'm hoping to launch the International Spiritual News Network, but I need to start the prep work now. And, you know, I'm working on the website for the ISNN. Um, it's going to be a platform where other people can have their shows on it as well. I do believe it's going to be a content creation, a bit, a bit, a bit like the Guy TV Network, where it creates content. But, but, but the the thing behind it, the the, the the kind of glue is the news as well. So we will be reporting the news as is. But then we look at the deeper karmic reasons behind it. I believe that's what it's going to be. Uh, I, all I know is I've, I'm going to do it, and I I'd been fighting it for so so long so long Why have you been fighting it, do you uh think? because uh i think we live in multiple purposes and i think um i think i i you know i know this is one of them it won't be the only thing but i think i've been finding it because um of that a little bit but also uh uh i'm but i've been burnt out com yeah. completely yeah yeah yeah, I, I think if I do any more interview shows, and I, I, I will continue the more show on the ISN network. It'll be exclusively available on that. Um, that people even care about it, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not. No, there's no ego there. There really isn't. I, 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 I'm, I'm done with it, to be honest. And I, I, I'm done with a lot of things. And um, my, my documentary that I'm working on right now is, is a documentary that that that'll, that'll be broadcast on the ISN which is um, kind of a first of its kind, which is actually 
an investigative piece looking into the industry that I've been a part of for a long time, uh, looking into the secret space program. Um, and one of the, a couple of the whistleblowers involved in that. And, um, it's a true crime. I mean, there, there is a murder that took place in this docuseries and it's, um, based on a guy called Mark Richards, who's, um, pretending to have a wet dream about being a secret space program whistleblower, uh, and that he wasn't involved in the murder of his friend, Richard Baldwin, that he didn't orchestrate the murder and that he, he thinks that he, he was framed by the deep state for his work spent in the secret space program, but he spent the work in the secret space program and his time in the dream world. And that's a beautiful place to be, but that's not the shared reality. And then he's got a wife that goes on the UFO circuit who believes that his wet dreams are true. And, um, Joanne, if you're watching this right now, be I'm back <laughs> and the docuseries is continuing and I want this to be your wake up call as well. You know, I, I believe you've been lied to. I believe you're the new crossing Hoover. You're crossing Hoover 2.0. You're going to hate that, but you are. And uh, this man is a psychopath. He's a manipulator and you've been manipulated, but also you've played the, 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 the tune as well. You got your hands on the house, didn't you? And, you know, you do have something to to walk away with, even if the house is dilapidated, the land's worth a lot of money in Marin County. So I will always stand by that. And uh, you thought that I gave up. You, you, you did your lovely book where you put, you know, the end, the end par uh, uh, chapter about myself and that lot. But unfortunately, I never gave up. You're now uh, uh, the, the, the beginning part of the ISNN. And I've got to thank you for that as well, for the game that we're playing. So, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, Hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> shout yeah. out. Shout um, out. Well, yeah. that's a that's a beautiful thing um, that you're bringing forward, and something that I think we need. <laughs> everybody needs yeah i mean you know like, i don't pretend to be on this platform and be the a, 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 an angel and an angelic i hate people thinking me like that well, i and, like how and, you give people a voice and it's I different think, well thank you yeah i'm not trying to bun in i just want to say look look i i don't pretend to be someone i'm trying not to pretend to be someone i'm not do you know what i mean i'm trying not to do that um and uh i think that's one thing i've not liked about this work is it's pigeonholed me in that box and i'm like Oh, uh, God, you know. But there's a way to, there are, but you have to, like, obviously understand that when you're, like, you haven't done, say, for example, us sitting and talking about you and your chart, how often do you get on your show and talk about yourself? So you can't expect the public to um, look at you that way when you're not allowing them in on that level. I know it's terrible. I, I, I don't actually know that that's true. I, I, I don't really do interviews. That's, that's the truth. Or not many of them. I've done, actually only done a few more at the latter part of, you know, the, the of, of, of where I'm at right now. Um, and, um, I wanted you, like, I wanted to have a chat with you for that reason. Cause I want, I wanted you to come out more in terms of like, I, yeah, I wanted to get you, your energy out there because I think that that's really important that people have um, that, you know, deeper connection and start to understand you and your energy and things like that because it's going to make them resonate with your content well, so much more. I hope one thing, I think the one thing that the more shows done for me, which is going to be beneficial for the ISNN is that it's just showing some trust. I'm, I'm hoping that it's done that. Um, you know, if I had someone come on my show that I found out in the end, well, look, I'm not going to bust balls just from one thing. Look, look, I, if there was some someone like Corey Good that had come on a, repeatedly, right, <laughs> that had shown to be not who they were and there was mountains of evidence, of course I would have said something and done something called whatever, whatever, right? And I, you know, I mean, if one off, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, we're not going to start doing background checks on everyone. Do you know what I mean? I need to start with myself first. Um, but um, I want the ISNN to be a voice for the community that, you know, there are platforms out there that majorly mislead people. And, uh, and you know, we will be taking them on as well. And, and you know, we're not taking them on. It's not about that. You, you know, because when you point a finger at someone, you're pointing it back at yourself, really, right? I, I think. What is, it, well, I don't know about exposed. Do you know? I think it is holding people accountable. I think that's a yeah, better way of putting it. Well, I like that. I like holding people accountable almost better than ex exposing truth. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I yeah, that, yeah. I don't want to start exciting the troll people out there. So 
I've, uh, I've, I've, got, I've got enough of that coming with this documentary. You have no idea. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, you are. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, look, I mean, look, things happen in, you know, in my life. Uh, Dorian, if you're watching this as well, uh, I can't wait for you. It, bro, if you want to release the, the, the uh, tapes of me and my ex-wife uh, in, in, in conversation that I accidentally put out on my channel a year ago, and I, you know, and people will say to me, well, how can you put that out accidentally? Well, being tired and not thinking what you're doing and being wrecked emotionally and everything else, which is no excuse for it, right? Even though my ex-wife never believed me that I put it out by mistake, uh, and I did, I really did. But you're going to put that out, bro? Do it. Yeah, do do that. If that's really what you want to do, and you're going to threaten me with, with, with me putting this docu-series out. But it doesn't really change the fact of the murder, does it? I mean, uh, I mean, and, and you wanting to dox me and everything else, it doesn't really change the facts, does it? So, you know, do what you want to do, but I'm coming for you as well, as much as you're coming for me. So... And there's that cancer coming. Yes, there it comes out. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. The cancer is beautiful yes. until yeah. they're like a little black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's it's all good. Look, if you're gonna fight, if if, if you're gonna go against the, uh, certain people, um, yes, they're gonna. That's, that's a lovely little uh, little uh, Easter eggs that are kind of come out as well. So uh, there's yeah, there's always there's always resist. Like what I find is that in life, there's um equal resistance to you know the effort of force so um as you expand and increase your vibration there's an equal opposite force yeah i'm hoping a lot of vibration will be increased with this talking series I'm, I'm i'm sure i'm sure it will be i'm sure it will be and i, I and i'll be pleased when it's done and over you know with, drew, with sorry go ahead what drew your interest to do that documentary um I'd never come across anything or I'd never come. I'd always known there were, there were uh, stories out there within this community that obviously were not true. And I'd always known that, um, well, I'd seen that there were big support for some of these stories where hosts would get these people on, even if they were told and show incredible evidence that it's not true what's being said, they would just ignore it. And one, one of those platforms was Kerry Cassidy, Project Camelot. And um, I just thought it was amazing that, that, that you know, we, we look at these massive platforms and that because they're big, we are sort of self-assured that they're, that they've done their due diligence i guess or that they wouldn't mislead people but that's not the case and i think it's about you know i want this docuseries to be about people taking their own power back and and where, and also it, it interests me that people were so out of their alignment with with um uh discernment you know um I hope that anything that I've put out there, the majority, not not everything, but the majority of stuff I put out there, you know, uh, yes, it's unprovable, a lot of it, but what is it really doing? Is it is it helping you to become a better person? I hope it's not telling you what to do, what to say, what to think, but it's 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 asking you to go within or to see the the magnificent that is, that you really are. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'd like to think, and I think there's a lot of. Um, conspirituality out there right now where a lot of the QAnon movement got mixed in with the spiritual stuff as well and not that it matters to everyone but it mattered to me I suppose and hey isn't the news a great way of doing it legally to uh, look at some of these things that's for the you know I mean I think that's what I liked it's about it as well because I think for two major reasons one it throws people off the inner work and the um you know the what yes it's a distraction yeah absolutely it's a distraction. um but um, oh, I forgot the other one. No, I, I think. We, yeah. Sorry if I put you off there, but you know I, that's a that's a massive part of it. It's, it's a distraction, isn't it, from w working on yourself? And I was going to say, it, it. I see too many people um, that are new to their journey that are being misled by this, and it's so dangerous. The stuff they're being taught and told and things like that and they don't understand because they're not coming from um an aware place so they're just kind of like you know blindly trusting and having faith um absolutely no it's so true and people do get on this stuff on their first part of their journey and most people you'll see that have gone on that journey 
get off it in the end, right? Um, but um, the people that, that lead some of this journey, they'll say they're spiritual and all this kind of stuff, but they're on a journey as well. Do you know what I mean? Every, everyone is, and n- no one can say they're completely right, but I mean, I think what, what it taught me doing this docuseries was you know, the, there is such thing as, 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 as evidence sometimes, and, and to go against that, uh, it, well, that, that, that's a dangerous place to be sometimes, and, and, I, and, and we, we do live in a time, sorry, but I, and I just want to say, we do live in a time of like, well, with, with the Russian conflict of, of, of like obvious and just massive um, misinformation, disinformation, don't we? Yeah. And the egos at the moment are just wanting to grab hold of stuff and run wild. And I think that the biggest misconception is that someone that's involved in spiritual things or has that sort of, you know, takes that um, place and doesn't have any issues because some of the most, I think, um, most clever and narcissistic manipulative people um, or some of them that I do know are in the community. So, um, yeah, be really careful. Yeah, oh, uh, that's so true. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, um, you know, I mean... I doubt I doubt the ISNM will always, you know, or, or rarely, you know, always, rarely, always um, two different things there, aren't they? Well, not all the time, um, you know, have that angle. I mean, I, I want it, I, you know, I, I, well, I'm sure that angle is going to be there because in journalism with mainstream news, it wants to be there. But not just, you know, all the time for our community. This is just something that happened, I fell into. Yeah, you're wanting to put something up for channelers and psychics and whatnot so that people can, um, I don't know, delve into their content or get in touch with them, things like that. So what you're talking about there maybe is the the website channeling.com. So, yeah, yeah, I've got the International Spiritual News Network, so that's going to be my own network with other people's shows and news content on there. And then I've also got the website channeling.com, which initially is a bit uh, well it's a reader's platform where people can well, speak live a, or you know maybe book um sessions shall i say with um different types of spiritual advisors and um i want channeling.com though to be more than just that i want it to be a resource for everything channeling that's what i really want to build it out to be i i built the reader's platform side to begin with which has barely launched well, so you're running, so they're two separate things. They're would two consider, separate things, yeah. Would you consider incorporating the channeling under the... No, but number? but but with the ISNN, we may have channelers, astrologers, all types of different people with different spiritual gifts to come on to contribute towards, you know, sections of, of the content that we're making, be it the news or whatever, some of the content. And I do I do want I do want to do mainstream content, but I but I also want to do it from a spiritual perspective. So if we do do true crime, for example, we may look at old cases again, but do it, you know, with um looking at the case and then looking at it with a, a psychic investigator. Do you know what I mean? Um, we're not, I'm not, I don't want to do what Gaia TV's just do it. I, 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 I want to try to make it more mainstream. And I'm, I, I actually, even at this early stage, you know, when it does start to launch, I may cut out a lot of the spiritual lingo. I may say to myself, you know what? Yes, I'm talking about this direction right now, but actually, am I, am I putting off help that people really need and because we're using spiritual terms that that person never got the help because of that so is it more beneficial for everyone to start d- diluting it a lot and hiding it or masking it we're not hiding an, it I masking an, it maybe. i see an issue with, with that though you know like I, i've thought about this because the only i have seen sort of a lot of things online about different language different people use in the community and i've, I've thought about this a lot the English language is already very limited. Um, But then what we have to remember is that every single person has their own unique definition and experience of every single word. So you're never going to have the exact same alignment um, or it will be very rare. So so I think when it comes to, um, I think sometimes we can pay too much attention. 
I definitely think we can sometimes be too loose with our words. I know that I'm really, really loose with the way I talk and I phrase things in a way that people probably like won't think that's the correct word to use. Um, but I just use what resonates with me and I <laughs> yes. take things me now. You know, it's it's that's all I care about because it's mm. my world, it's my experience. <laughs> that's what I care about. Um, yeah, I, I can hear your language now. Yeah, I, can, I can hear I can hear what I you're think, really saying. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think if you can um, if you can read between the lines and understand generally what somebody's trying to say, um, then you know you're going to take something valuable from that. I, I hear you, and I yes, yes, yes to everything you're saying there. And I'm going to think about that, all this of what you're saying, not just because you're saying it, but but I'm thinking about all this as well. And then you're to you're totally right. And um, oh, um, sorry, I was going to go somewhere else really quick. I just wanted I just wanted to say. The minute we start coming up with like concrete terms and thing for things, um, we do what humans have a really great um, history of doing, where they take something, box it in, and distort it, and try to create some system. And I think that the worst thing that we can do to spirituality is try to turn it into some sort of like boxed in set thing which we have definitions and rules and whatnot for when it in itself is something so free-flowing and natural and indescribable i think that's so true yeah um that'll be interesting to come back to in the future and just figure out how i did that i tell you what would be interesting as well to see even doing this interview right now I, i'm seeing the future right or i'm just i'm just imagining it right because I'm, I'm like god imagine doing this conversation when we're all in person i i that, and that's what i want for my studio you know to have in person conversations as well and you know even, even to do shows like joe rogan you know where, where where you know let's let's get that weed out do you know what i mean let, let let's let's I'm no. down for that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Let's let's have those conversations like that. Yeah. And and you know, I I do feel we, we, I'm have spoken to you of this about this maybe off air, but um, Sedona. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I was a little. I'll be honest with you, I I've been resistive to it a little bit, right? Um, because I when I when I I'm in Wisconsin right now, but I was living in Kansas. And a lot of people say, Kansas, oh my God, you know, why, why, why there? But it was just where I was. And, and I found it very grounding, right? I mean, it's a very, you know, it's a religious place, but it's, I just found, I enjoyed that grounding part of it. Where Sedona, I don't feel like that, right? I feel, you know, a little bit ungrounded, right? Because th th there's just so much energy there, right? It's a really powerful place, I'll, I'll say that. But I think for the ISNN and for channeling.com, it makes so much sense business-wise to go there. And so I, I probably, that's where it's probably going to um, uh, be born. But it'll, be, it'll be born here in Wisconsin, but I'm not staying here. I'm, I'm just here because I'm going through uh, immigration right now, which I've mentioned a few times on, on, on this show. Um, I'm, I'm in Im almost like I'm in Im immigration jail right now because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on a waiting not list. They're going to send you back, are they? Uh, uh, well, uh, as, uh, as long as I get a free pl plane ride back, no, no, um, no, I don't believe so. I, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, um, I'm um, going, well, no, I, I've, uh, I'm going through the system and I've got to wait until October just to get everything, uh, just to get my green card. So, cause everything's very slow over here right now. Uh, as it is in a, a lot of places, but uh, immigration got quite affected with COVID, and uh, I've got a letter back, and uh, you know, and uh, I was I was wishing that it was going to be sooner, but it, it is what it is, and you can't do much while you're in that state. Um, but they did give me they did give me the option. I can actually leave the country right now, but it's it's at a um, the potential of not getting back in. That's why I've not done it. Well, you wouldn't want to risk it. Oh, I, I I no, I wouldn't. But I would do anything just to be able to um you know, go back and see family and uh, maybe uh, travel a, a little bit as well, because I do feel myself pulled to Australia. But I do not, I feel myself pulled to all over the world right now with the International We're Spiritual News about Network. About a few times about your pull to Australia. Well, I, I, I am because the Philippines are there as well. And I'm going to be outsourced. Well, I've just outside, I've just started outsourcing um, my work 
And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, because I've got to think about the business side of all this as well, because it's going to be a business and it needs to be because it's got to be self fun. Well, I think it, well, it is going to be a business, even if it's non for profit, it's still going to be a business. Um, and, um, you know, I, 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 there is a lot to, to, to be done in, in that part of the world. Um, that, that I would keep traveling back and forth for, I, I feel. Um, but Australia, it, 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 it's not really the Philippines. It, it's Australia more, I feel. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I always get told that there's a there's a pool there. Um, but um, there is a lot going on over there right now. Because you, you, you're obviously in Tasmania, which is just out, which part of Australia, which I, I learned from you <laughs> that it was. Um, but there's a lot going on over there right now. Yeah, there is. Um, and to be honest, my reality does not include most of it. So, um, you know, on an energetic level, um, I'm interacting, um, but on, yeah, I'll, I'm not too aware and too conscious of what's going on in Australia on the level of like government or news or media, nothing like that. Um, I couldn't tell you anything anything at all <laughs> that's okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, in, in terms of um the country itself I'm so deeply pulled as well to like go exploring the land you know it's so interesting Australia it's such a huge country and all of this is spread out along the border and there's just a vast not muchness in the middle for most of it and yes. then everyone's crammed into the borders um so there's it, it's always really intrigued me the original people of the land and um the stories their dream time stories and things and their connections to um the universe and spirit um and there's some i would say uh pretty strong energetic places around the country um and yeah i'm definitely keen to explore those well, I do see your Facebook feed sometimes um, with um, where you're based, and it's really beautiful as well. And I, I was just on a uh, interview uh, while well, I was interviewing someone over in Australia, just outside Melbourne. Well, well, it was kind of well. Okay, I don't exactly know where it was, right? But it was outside Melbourne, and oh my god, the view, the oh, just breathtaking, really yeah, breathtaking. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Although we're headed into winter now, so we're gonna oh, we're seeing yes. all the leaves fall and it's getting very cold. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's so crazy. Cr yeah. Well, I'll let you know what it's like in California when I'm when I'm there next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm I'm I, I see everything uh, going. But you know, um I try not to plan too much because what's that saying when man plans, God laughs? And, um, but there, I, I think there, I don't know if you feel the same, but there's always, there's maybe something that pulls us sometimes, isn't there? If there's something that what really wants to happen, it, it sort of makes itself happen, like doesn't it? Like, like an overriding program or something like it just, it forces its way to your reality regardless. Yeah. I don't know if you found that in your life, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Although no I could, well yeah i found that but i link it back to the fact that i think my soul is like you know is very much driving that right yeah yeah and mm. you know if your soul's driving and your soul's in charge then i think innately it's going to surface yeah because you you've only been doing this work well not for well i don't know how, how long have you been doing it for <laughs> i shouldn't say if i don't know but how... look i've my work's a bit funny. So I've been doing, um, running my business as it is, um, like publicly um, online under Guy Intuitive for a year and a half or so, um, or it may, maybe even two years now. But um, I've been doing astrology um, for years before that. And I also have been, yeah, I've also like done probably, you know, 30 to 40 different certificates in things, diplomas, and um, because I like to study so much. So I figure, well, like I'm going to get qualified for something because I know there's people out there who value the qualifications. So I've gone and done, you know, like six different Reiki courses just for the fun of it 
but my learning and practicing was like dated prior to that. Right. Well, one yeah, thing I know so, about you is that you're very serious about what you do. I'm very serious. And I was going to, I was laughing because I was looking, I was looking at our charts and it made me think of my rising sign as I was analyzing yours because mine's Capricorn. And oh, in, yeah. yeah, but in all of like, I've got a lot of cancer and Leo and things like that in my energy, except I've got a Capricorn rising, which makes me like incredibly when it comes to work and um, yeah, I'm very present myself. I'm very meticulous. I delve right in and I take it very, very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that because I've interviewed you before that there was a shift with you that you were, um, veterinary nurse, I believe you were fully, fully trained and that you made that shift to what you're doing now. And I can't imagine, and I said this to you in the, in the other interview, you know, just what that was like to, to, to make that choice. Cause, um, it takes some balls to, to, to well, you know Do what, that. something, something that I've thought about, because in the last few years, I think about myself and who I have um, slowly become and who I'm becoming um, and in comparison to who I was and all through my life, I feel like I've had some very, very big energies within me and I've had some pretty big experiences um, not only externally but internally to navigate and things like that um, and it has made me um, oh you're gonna have to cut this bit because I've like lost my brain <laughs> don't worry I, I I've barely got one um right now what this was time I saying? Uh, that, um, that, that it's never guided you to to get to into this direction that because we were talking about I asked the question of um, you know having left you know the, the nursing career that you was on oh yeah yeah um nursing career that I was on because oh no it's all right <laughs> yeah no I, and I, I said to you you know just how how much it takes balls it takes to do what you were doing and you said that well you oh, know yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so I've had so many um big energies flying around and I think I in my earlier years was like a child with my energies um and so like yeah, so like I was very, you know, like I, I guess I didn't have much poise in the way that I expressed myself. Um, so I was just wild. Um, I've learned that my biggest strength is in harnessing those energies and being able to use them to my advantage. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I can imagine yeah. it, it, life would have looked very different back then compared to where you are now. And, um, but then I think again, being a mother helps as well. I you was know, like, just gonna say parent. that. I was just yeah. gonna say. I didn't know whether you, were, you wanted to bring that up or not. But I, I, that's how I felt to answer that. That being a mum, that changes a lot of things. Yeah. It, it, in like in, in good like, ways, in really good ways. Yeah. It gave me. I mean, as soon as I fell pregnant, I started having really strong psychic premonitions. Um, you know, of him, like when he was about four years old, for example. Um, and then when he got to four years old, I specifically remember that exact same thing and it triggered the dream memory. Um, so like a lot of, yeah. A, so since he came along, he, things just went really quickly. And I was, um, I evolved exponentially and um, we went on this journey together really. So um, I, yeah, I brought him along. So he's learning these things as I learn them. Well, it's been you and him for a long time, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? In in that sense, and I'm I'm sure. Um, God, if you look back to the person that you was, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's going to have changed. Do you know how how can it not? Um, and that's a that's a beautiful thing that is that's a, that that because it for some people it may not, and um, we're all on different journeys, aren't we? And uh, we can't compare, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad that you can see that it has done nothing but good for you do you know what I mean to have that experience in your life I love yeah I don't I don't think I mean only the people on my Facebook probably would see that I've got a son but I absolutely adore being a mum um he's he's like my best friend and he's <laughs> really weird and quirky and yes um we have like all the same hobbies and um that's things, cool so it's fun. Yeah. that's cool that's cool yeah um and um you're never alone i guess do you know what i mean there's always something going on yeah um absolutely and i'm conscious of time right now as well so uh is there anything else that we might want to add to this because we've spoken about quite a bit actually um i don't think so no i think that yeah. we are pretty good 
um, I, yeah. Let's just remind people of your website one more time for the, um, yes, to get a, to get a, well, to get a reading or just, just to even, you know, connect with yourself as well to talk about what, uh, what the, um, uh, you know, yeah. what, what you so can most offer. people that reach out usually reach out because they're just drawn to my energy yeah. um, and they sort of begin with that and then we, we go on from there. If you want to get in touch, it is Gaia Intuitive on Facebook and Sally underscore Alka on Instagram. Well, that's coming up on the screen. It has been coming up on the screen throughout this as well. I thank you for um, the conversation that we've had right now and um, I, I appreciate you, um, you know, letting us come on to your platform as well and you know what's funny is that I was thinking before sorry to just cut you off but I was like before this um chat I was thinking I, I feel like when I say to you you know we're going to chat soon I feel like I've known you for like 50 years and I'm saying to like an, a friend that I've caught up with like a hundred times like yeah we'll, we'll we'll catch up soon and I I get in my body I feel like it's a catch up because we haven't caught up for such like we've got so much to talk about and then but then I thought that's probably our cancer because I'm a cancer moon you're a cancer moon so that's probably that energy where I'm like no like I feel like you know very comfortable in um having these sorts of conversations because we always sort of we do go off track a bit but yes <laughs> it's all good it's all good don't worry and no that, I enjoy, it, it is enjoy. nice to have that feeling there absolutely it is yeah. and um I think um, I think we're both going through changes right now. I know, I know you. I know I am. God, um, I think the planet is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and yeah. I, I think uh, that's the thing about life. And it is is what if, if someone said to me in the future, you know, what is life all about? I said, one word. It's definitely changed. Do you know that? It is, so is. Yeah, but you know, people say like um, there's a lot of changes going on. That's one of the biggest things I hear in the community. But you can't not have change. So. I know, right? I know, I know. We're all just deluding <laughs> ourselves that actually it's just it's just yeah. a part of life. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It is it is a funny time that we live in, though. I will end it there. It is a funny time. Um, in, in just 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 as you know, with all the energies that are out there right now, and uh, I wish only peace for so many people and love. So uh, thank you for letting me on your show. It's very appreciated. And thank you back.